Welcome to the Dirty Lazy Keto Podcast by Stephanie Laska. I lost 140 pounds, and I cannot wait to share all of my keto, low-carb secrets with you during Season 5. Get ready for a fast ride, because the Dirty Lazy Keto Podcast by Stephanie Laska is going to get you inspired and help you to be successful. Let's get started. Restart the keto diet fast. Restart. Reboot. Reboot. Restart. It's like kind of a stressful topic for a lot of us, right? Because you think, I want to start. I want to start fast. I want to restart. I want to reboot. I want to get this going. You know, maybe there was a situation, anyone, that prompted you to want to restart. It's okay to share that in the comments. You know, restarting is pretty common. Um, Tell me what's going on a little bit. Um, Let me know. Did you have like a cheat day that turned into a cheat week, cheat month, cheat year? (laughs) Because that happens, right? Maybe you had that experience. Um, Maybe you're looking to restart keto um, fast because you took a little break. Maybe it was intentional. Or maybe you had like some kind of weight loss stall or plateau. And you're thinking, what can I do to get things cooking again? So tell me in the comments, explain a little bit what makes you interested in this topic in particular. And please, please, please give this a thumbs up. That way it arises to the top of um, our social media group here and everyone can see it. It really helps when you do that. So we're talking today about restarting the keto diet fast. Fast. And I want you to know, everyone, that you are not alone in this situation. I bet a lot of you are feeling like, oh, gosh, no one else has to go starting this alone. Everyone else is perfect. I get that. Um, I myself had to restart and reboot and reflip and configure and make changes and tweaks during my weight loss journey of losing 140 pounds. It wasn't always just simple and same. I had to make adjustments along the way. So that's why I'm sharing all of these tricks and tips with you about how to reboot, how to restart, how to get focused. Um, And specifically, I want to put together five I'm not wanting to put together. I did put together. I put together five specific strategies to help everybody today all around this topic, all great advice, all great tips for you on how to restart the keto diet fast. You can even do this within 24 hours. You're going to love these tips. So get out your pencils. Get out your paper. Let's get this party started. We're going to get it going. So number one, here we go. I got five points for you, five strategies. Number one, my advice to you when you're trying to reboot or restart is to get out a piece of paper, (laughs) right? Get out a little pad of paper, get out a sticky note, get out something casual. It doesn't have to be all stressful and, you know, no math, but I want you to make a simple plan, at least for a day, a day or two, you know, maybe five days if you're ambitious, even a week if you want to, but at least a day. So get out a pad of paper if you want to. I put some of my keto stickers here on this pad of paper as an example. But I want you to write out just some simple things that you're going to do. Like for breakfast, I'm going to have this. For lunch, I'm going to plan on this. For dinner, for snack, yada, yada, yada. You see what I mean? Just write out a simple, it doesn't have to be like recipes and graphs and charts and all that. Just keep it simple, but do write it down. I think that when you put things on paper, pen to paper or type it out, either way, you are committing to yourself that you're going to do it. And it kind of makes it a lot easier than you just follow along when that day pops up. Now, if... You would like to have a little chart to fill out. I understand. You can go over to my website if you don't want the piece of paper method. If you want to go to dirtylazyketo.com, you can print out these really cool carb trackers to fill out. And you could fill out your meal plan um, along the way. It has Monday through Friday, either in a calendar format or with lines. And it's at dirtylazyketo.com. It's free to print out. dirtylazyketo.com forward slash carb dash tracker carb dash tracker. So dirtylazyketo.com forward slash carb dash tracker. So let me know if you have any questions about that. But I strongly, strongly urge you, if you're trying to reboot, if you're trying to refocus, if you're trying to get moving again, write it down in some manner. It is going to be much more effective. Now let's say your challenge right now is you're all, Stephanie, I agree with you on number one with the simple plan, but I have no idea what to write down. That might be happening. You might be like, that's why I'm rebooting. That's why I'm restarting because I have no idea what to do. I'm feeling lost. Whatever I did last time didn't work. I need a little help. Okay, so I understand that. And that's why you may want to refer to your copy of Extra Easy Keto. 
and look at the section on building a simple meal plan because there are examples in here that I provide to you for 20 grams of net carb a day menus, 30 grams net carbs a day menu, 50 grams net carb a day menu, whatever is going to work best for you and your lifestyle. You can just use that chapter to build upon. You can copy mine or you can use it as inspiration. But check out that in Extra Easy Keto. Now remember, you don't have to be fancy. It's okay to repeat meals. It's okay to repeat snacks. If you find something that works for you, like breakfast, you might have it the same every day that week. Totally fine, right? Especially when you are rebooting, restarting, trying to get reinvigorated. You want to keep things as simple and easy and as predictable as possible. That way you will be successful and lose weight, right? And be on top of this. Now, I wanna give you a little reminder before you go off on number one. Here's my little string around the finger. Isn't that cute? The red string. <laughs> Here is your reminder about number one. A failure to plan is a plan to fail. You agree with that? Put it in the comments, tell me what you think. A failure to plan is a plan to fail. At least that's how it works in my book. If I don't have a plan of action, if I don't have it written down, Things tend to go in the pooper. So that's my opinion. Tell me your thoughts. Number one is all about making and committing to a simple plan as easy as possible for yourself, at least for the next day, maybe two days, max seven. Don't get crazy. Let's move on to number two. You guys like that one so far? I think so, right? It's a good one. Okay, number two, when we're talking about rebooting and restarting, here's my advice for you. Some of you are going to feel like, well, I need to do more. I need to do more. I need to do more. You might even get so stressed out that you feel like I'm putting the wig on. <laughs> you might feel like your hair is on fire because you're like so, you know, you have so much urgency. You have so much motivation. You want to get things moving. You want to get things going. You, wanna, you want things to happen. And you feel that like pressure, that craziness right? Where you're feeling like, ah, oh, my hair's on fire, my hair's on fire. And there's that urgency, which can often make a lot of folks feel the need to go in a really ridiculous direction. And that's where I want to caution you about number two. So if you're feeling like a little like, ah, like running around with your hair on fire, I want you to take a deep breath, calm down, get out your bucket and put your fire out. Here's my fireman's bucket. <laughs> take that bucket Cool yourself down, take a deep breath, and I want you to acknowledge that it's normal to feel a sense of urgency. It's normal to feel stressed out and want to do it all at once, and it's normal to want to take shortcuts. This is where a lot of people get going on the shortcuts. They go, oh, well, I have to reboot. I have to refocus. I have to do everything fast, 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 fast. So then people start getting tempted by, like, magic solutions. <laughs> here's, my, here's my magic eight ball. I want you to be aware of this. Here's my magic eight ball. Be aware that this might happen. This temptation for a quick fix, um, you know, get rich scheme, get thin scheme, get in ketosis scheme. This is where you really have to put your finger and stop that from happening. Like put your finger on it and go, no, it's okay to feel stressed, but I'm not going to go, you know, on the internet and buy a bunch of like keto drinks or ketone drinks from some marketing, you know, MLM pyramid scheme people. You don't need to do that to lose weight. You don't need to buy expensive pills. You don't need to buy ketone meters or breathalyzers. You don't need to buy keto test strips. You don't need to pee on anything to tell you if you are on the right track. I'm going to hold up a couple of these. These have not been used because that would be extra gross. You don't need any of that stuff. Remember, put your hair out on fire if that's what's happening. You also don't need any weight loss medicine, um, ketone medicine. You don't need any of that. So calm yourself. That's part of number two is just to take a deep breath and acknowledge that you're feeling stressed. Now, I want to reassure you. I want to reassure you that you can be successful on Dirty Lazy Keto. You can lose weight. You can get back on, on track without all these ketone powders and magic potions. So throw those away, acknowledge the stress, push it aside, and then tell yourself, I know the keto diet works. 
I know specifically Dirty Lazy Keto Works. I've seen Stephanie lose 140 pounds. I've seen other members in the social media groups that she hosts and on different magazine covers and on different media outlets. You have seen people lose tons of weight at all ages and all parts of the world. So it's not just, you know, the young people. It's not just the this or the that or the people in the U.S. with all access to that. No, no, no. There's people from Australia, from New Zealand, from the Czech Republic, from Russia, Canada, from all over the United States and the South and the North, even in Alaska. I had a person in the North Pole writing to me. People from all over the world can lose weight on Dirty Lazy Keto. It works. It's effective. And they're not taking a bunch of medicine. They're not taking shortcuts. Right? They're not. And it still works. Okay, I'm going to hold this up just to remind you. Dirty Lazy Keto has been seen all around the world and all sorts of media outlets. I'm going to rattle some off. I've had interviews. I've had articles shared in Fox News, Yahoo, Reader's Digest, um, U.S. News and World Report on the Today Show, the Costco Connection, First for Women magazine, the New York Post, um, Publishers Weekly, uh, NBC, First for Women magazine, Men's Health, USA Today bestseller. I've shared my even my story in uh, Daily Burn, Muscle and Fitness magazine, Women's World, Women's Health, uh, Playboy. No pictures. <laughs> I never like to say that when people freak out. No pictures. It was just an article. Um, Power Bar, all sorts of links and articles about my story and about how I lost weight. And how other people have also lost weight on Dirty Lazy Keto. So keep in mind that this information has been shared in a lot of different places. And it's helped a lot of different pe people from around the world. So it's too legit to quit, right? Too legit. Too legit to quit. It's helpful to remind yourself of that. Because otherwise you can go down that path where you're like, I need weight loss drugs. I saw Oprah and she's doing it. Okay. Just because someone else is doing it doesn't mean you have to do it you can have success on Dirty Lazy Keto. Now, if you want to explore that topic more, because I just mentioned those weight loss drugs, I know it always gets people. Um, but stay tuned, I'll link up the next video. It'll be called Keto versus Weight Loss Drugs. We'll have a whole episode just on that. I'll address each and every concern that you have in that video. So let's put that aside. We're not gonna go off track. Pretty good, right? So far, so good. Let's move on to number three, because I had five points I wanted to share with you today. Now, number three, here's my strategy for you when you're rebooting, when you are refocusing, when you are restarting Dirty Lazy Keto. You can do this in 24 hours. Here's what I want you to do. Take this advice. Cut out the keto food. I'm showing you my scissors. Now, temporarily, it doesn't have to be forever, keep in mind, Number three, though, if you're rebooting, you're restarting, you're refocusing, here's that great advice. Number three, cut out all that keto-type food. Now, here's an example of what I'm talking about. If you're like, what is she talking about? What's keto food? What I mean is when you go to the store and, or you're on the social media group and you see people talking about, oh, I found this great you know, keto waffle mix, this keto cupcake mix, this keto ice cream, this keto candy, this keto cake, keto granola, keto cereal, all these things that say keto on them. I'm sure they're fabulous. I'm sure they're great. Yes, you can probably have them, but if you're restarting, you're rebooting, you've been having trouble, you're having focused issues, cut these for now. Let's get rid of them. And let's just focus on the basics. Focus on the basics. That is gonna help you make progress, get a handle on things, feel more confident, and start moving forward. Now down the line, down the line when things are going a little bit better, give it a little time, you can start reintroducing you know, those products that you may have enjoyed in the past or heard about. You know, those keto breads. You can start reintroducing those later. The tortillas, all that, all that good stuff. I know you love it. But for now, if you're restarting, you're rebooting, you're refocusing, let's get rid of these keto breads and keto everything and just start using real food. I'm holding up some lettuce leaves. You can wash them yourselves and use this to make a, a sandwich or a roll up with um, some lunch meat, some cheese some lettuce, some tomato, some cream cheese or mayonnaise, avocado. Make yourself a nice big hearty sandwich and enjoy your lunch without the keto bread and see how that goes. Now, if you're having like eggplant, I'm sorry, if you're having like ethnic food for dinner, you're having like Thai food, Indian food, 
and you're stressed out, what do I have instead of rice? What do I do instead of non bread? You know, find some real food alternatives that you might be able to swap out. Like here's an example. Instead of rice, I might use cauliflower rice. That's an easy one. But instead of rice, I might also just cut up some lettuce or some cabbage. Um, instead of non bread, I might slice up some eggplant slabs and crisp them up in the air fryer with a little oil and salt. So there's a lot of clever things that you can do to swap out keto type food for keto tortillas, keto bread, for just real food to help you get back on track. So trust me, this is a very important tip. Remember, you can always introduce these things later. So once you get a handle on things, you can bring back those delicious keto protein bars. You can always have your keto deliciousness cereals or ice cream or whatever it is you're, you know, in love with. You can always have them later, but just reintroduce, reintroduce them once you've gotten a handle and you're making more progress. And then do it slowly so you can make a better plan. Because if all you're doing is eating like keto commercial food from the grocery store, you might run into a few problems, right? I know you believe me because it happens to a lot of people. They're like, can I have it? Can I have it? Can I have it? And I'm like, you can have whatever you want, but just keep in mind that there might be some consequences. There might be some backlash to always, always, always depending on some of these keto type products. You have to have a plan that's personalized just for you. Yes. <laughs> Let's move on to number four. I want to hear your thoughts on that one. Before, actually, before I go to number four, I want to hear your thoughts on this. I want to know if there was a keto food that made you stall or made you stressed out. Or if you have a question about a keto food or an experience, put it in the comments. Tell me if you guys agree with that or if you've had an issue. Tell me about your experience, your comments, your shares with uh, keto food might help somebody else who's struggling too. So while you do that, talk about the keto food in the comments. Keto commercial food, that is. I'm going to spin the wheel. Yay! I love to give away a prize, right, to someone in the comments at random. Today I'm going to give away a pack of keto stickers. How fun is that? So if you want to win, put that in the comments. Say, pick me, Stephanie. And how cool is that? Because I was showing you my um, little pad of paper earlier with all of the stickers on it, wasn't I? You'll win an assortment of keto stickers. I'll mail them right to your house. Now keep in mind, my little prize box, every week I spin the wheel and I pick out something. And if you don't win and you're very sad, you're like, I want the apron. I want the pot holder. I want Stephanie, the dirty, lazy keto magnet. I want the cutting board. Or maybe you would like to win one of my books, like Fast Food Guide. I want you to personalize it and mail it to me. Or the restaurant guide. Or the lunch pail. You know, all of these items that I'm giving away every week, including the stickers. If you didn't win and you're sad, you can always order them on my Etsy shop. So signed books, limited edition, DLK books prizes, if you will. I'm selling them at cost, at cost. I'm not making a trillion dollars on some stickers. I'm selling you them basically for the cost that it costs me to print them and to have a designer make them and then to mail them to you. So very inexpensive and affordable. You can buy all of these items on my shop, etsy.com forward slash shop, the dirty lazy keto shop all together. So etsy.com forward slash shop I gotta set this down. Too heavy. And then it's called the Dirty Lazy Keto Shop. And there's limited amounts of these things. Like I am selling what copies I had of the cookbooks and I'm almost out of some of them. Starter packs and I'm also doing a lot of like bundles like eating out pack where you get two cookbooks plus a free this or getting started pack with two of the getting started guides plus a bonus gift. So go check it out. There's some fun things over there. I know my daughter's helping me, so she's really into it. And my husband is super excited to clear out all of our like prizes and giveaways that we did for previous book launches. Then we have a little bit more room to grow and order new things. Spring cleaning, right? We've got to move out with some new goodies. So that is all about the prizes. So back on track here, I was talking about number four. I want to switch over to number four because I have five strategies for you. Now, number four is all about ketosis. Ketosis, ketosis, ketosis. Can I say it more? Four times? Ketosis, 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 ketosis. I want to keep saying that word because so many people, they watch the video, they come to the support group, they're like, what's ketosis? <laughs> what does it have to do with the keto diet? 
If you are not clear on what ketosis is and how to get there and why it's important, this is a fundamental um, piece of information that I need you to stop and do some homework on. Now, I talk about this at length in Extra Easy Keto. I give examples. I explain how and why and what you need to do to get into ketosis. So reread that chapter if you're struggling or you're not clear. Because you need to know, right? That's how the keto diet operates is the metabolic process of ketosis. Now, I will, I will give you a tiny summary, but I'm not going to answer 10 million questions because it's too much. I wrote a whole book on this idea, right, with specific examples and reasons why. It's all in that chapter. But here's the bottom line, guys, about number four. I'm holding up this giant pool floaty here. Think of carbs like a pool floaty. <laughs> They're floating around your system, okay? The carbs are floating around your system. They're, it's like in your blood, right? All the carbs are floating around your body, floating around your system. Now, you're not going to be able to go into ketosis, the fat-burning state that um, that's the whole premise of the keto diet. You cannot get into ketosis until all of these carbs are gone. So the carbs are like the pool floaties. They're floating around. You've got to burn through these fast. And you can't introduce any more, right? You don't want an excess amount of carbs. You need to change the way your body operates from running on carbs to running on ketones. And that's basically ketosis in a nutshell. Now, I know that's a little stressful for some of you. You're like, I don't know what that means. She, said, that's it. she went too fast. I don't know what that means. You're going to have to refer to the chapter then on ketosis and extra easy keto because I really go into it in more detail. But just know that you cannot get into ketosis until you burn through any excess floating around carbs that are in your system. You have to cut back. You have to get rid of those carbs in your body. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. How do you get rid of the carbs in your system? Some people like to go through a period of fasting. Does anyone here do that? Please share in the comments if you do. That works for a lot of people. Intermittent fasting or fasting, one meal a day, whatever. A lot of people do that. Now, if it works for you, share and give an example. Tell the group why it's working for you. Now, I tend to not do this. That's okay, too. You can do either one. Don't feel pressured or shamed or like you're not going to be able to get into ketosis and lose weight unless you fast. No, you can be flexible. You can do what's going to work for you. For me, I just stop eating after dinner. And for me, that helps from that period of time till breakfast the next day. It allows my body to kind of reset. You're going to figure out what's going to work best for you. Now, again, this is all explained inside Extra Easy Keto. Go to the chapter Day One Ketosis inside Extra Easy Keto, and it will go over all of this in detail and give more serious examples and um, respond to all the specific questions that you might have. But bottom line, your goal is to reduce your overall carb intake. You don't want a no-carb diet. You just want a lower-carb diet. And figuring that out is not that difficult. It just requires a little bit of trial and error on your part. So let's move on to number five. Number five on how to restart, reboot the keto diet. Number five is my message that every carb counts. Number five is every carb counts. Now, a lot of you are like, well, cutting back on some of those high carb foods, pretty obvious, pretty easy. You're feeling like, okay, you got a handle on that, right? Like things like bananas, bagels, um, pasta. You're like, okay, I get that. I know those are higher carb foods. You've cut those out. But when I give you the message about number five, every carb matters, I'm not necessarily talking about these high carb foods that you've already kind of swapped out. Because for a lot of folks, when they're rebooting, restarting the keto diet, my advice is for you to challenge yourself to address those little tiny carbs that are a little bit more suspicious or conspicuous, the ones that aren't the bananas, aren't the big pastas. Like, start looking at maybe the minutia, the smaller, hmm, how many carbs is in that type of questions that you might have. Now, again, I've got the food list inside of Extra Easy Keto, so you can refer to this if you don't want to look up each food or look on the back of each nutrition label, because I know it's a lot of work. That's why I put all the food lists together in the book. But challenge yourself every time you think, oh, it's fine, I can just have a little bit. A lot of people will say that about things like milk. They're like, oh, I can have a little milk. It's no big deal. You know, oh, I can have, you know, 
I can have a, you know, it's the holidays. I can have a little bit of, you know, grandma's baked potatoes or, or whatever. It's family dinner. It's in a dish. It's in my curry. People will say that to me. And I'm like, hey, <laughs> I want to go. Every carb counts. So if you're allowing yourself to just have, you know, oh, I'm just having a little milk once in a while. It's no big deal. I'm going to challenge you to tweak that, to change that, to address it, to stare it in the face and start finding substitutes that make more sense to you. You know, whether that be a non-dairy alternative milk like cashew or almond milk, find one that works best for you. But count those carbs. You can't just have a swig of milk and be like, I'm fine. Because you're not fine. That's why you're restarting and rebooting the keto diet. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here, right? Now, there's a lot of people who say, well, I just have a little coleslaw. It's, you know, I was at a buffet or, oh, you know, someone made it or I don't know how to do it, blah, blah, blah. People have these little mindsets where... It's like a loophole. Oh, it doesn't matter. I had it. It's just a bite. It's just a little bit. It does matter. And you can figure out how to make everyday recipes, you know, like coleslaw. You can make them in a sugar-free, low-carb way. Just like, you know, finding a potato substitute that's going to work best for you. For some of you, it might be radishes. Others are like, heck no, I'm not doing boiled radishes, Stephanie. Maybe for you, it might be something else entirely, like finding a different type of food that makes more sense. You have to do you, but you have to spend some time looking at this, finding some foods that are going to swap out. They're going to be a better substitute, finding some recipes, because that is going to make you successful when you reboot and reinvigorate yourself in the keto diet to focus on every carb, every carb matters, count them all, find little ways to fine tune this lifestyle to make it even better so that you are getting rid of those excess carbs that are floating around in your system right? Like the pool floaties. You got to get rid of those so you can get your body into ketosis. Does that make sense? <laughs> that just a little bit mentality. Yeah, it's not going to go far for you. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully that addresses or makes you think, okay, I can do this because these higher carb foods, you know, we just have to beware. We have to ask ourselves to do better. We have to realize that these carbs do matter. They quickly add up. They quickly prevent us from getting into ketosis. They keep our blood sugar too high. And then we're not successful, right? Then we want to give up because nothing's happening. So I hope that is some good advice for you. I hope those five tips, tell me in the comments which one maybe made a difference to you or today you heard it and you're like, okay, I'm going to think about that one a little bit more. So tell me which one of the five tips was helpful or even just tell me in the comments if you're feeling a little bit more motivated. Because really, you guys, it motivates me to see you being successful. I love helping you and giving you the strategies that worked best for me. Because getting into ketosis and losing weight, it doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't. And the DLK, the Dirty Lazy Keto Lifestyle, it is doable for everyone. No matter where you live, no matter your age, your gender, whatever your situation. Now, I'm going to coach you through the basics as long as you do your part. I'm asking you to reference some of these um, resources that I've created for you. And then I'm going to be here to cheer you on. I'm going to support you with social media posts. I'm going to support you with um, audio podcasts, with free videos that you can watch on YouTube. Um, social media is a great place for us to engage and to tag each other and to ask questions and to share. But you've got to do your part as well. You can't just go into this blind and be like, oh, why isn't it working? Why isn't it working? And I'm like, oh, come on. We can figure this out, but you've got to do your part. You can't just put your head in the sand and, you know, eat potatoes and then think magic, magic eight ball is going to do all the work, <laughs> right? We have to do a little bit of change to our diet, to our lifestyle, changes to our recipes, and then believe in ourselves and do that work to make it happen. And I'm going to be here to support you. I'm, I believe in you. I know you can do it. Be sure to stay tuned for that next video we talked about, which was keto versus weight loss drugs. And I want to give you a huge round of applause for being here today. So give yourself a round of applause. Say, yes, I did it. Yes, yes, yes. Because you did it. You took time for yourself today. I'm proud of you. You made time to say, I'm going to reboot. I'm going to learn. I'm going to do better. And I can do it. So put that in the comments. I can do it. I can do it. Thanks for joining me on the adventure today with the Dirty Lazy Keto Podcast. If you have questions about what we talked about, head over to my website, dirtylazyketo.com. While you're there, be sure to sign up for my free newsletter.